Hi, my name is Aaron Brunell. I'm with Wallcam Tech Support, and I'm here today to talk to you about boiler blowdown methods. Boiler control requires a conductivity sensor to determine the conductivity of the water in the boiler. Setting up the boiler conductivity sensor correctly, as described in our previous video, is key to good control. All programming and calibration for the conductivity measurement is done in the inputs menu. While pr programming for the blowdown valve relay that will control the conductivity in the boiler is in the outputs menu. Very large boilers may be plumbed with a small continuous blowdown that passes the conductivity sensor. When the conductivity reading increases above the set point, a valve in a second larger line will be directed to open on a larger blowdown line. For these installations, the relay wired to the blowdown valve only needs to be programmed with a simple on-off set point with a dead band. Key program settings include the set point, the dead band, the sensor input for the conductivity sensor, the control direction, and the relay mode. When using a motorized ball valve for the blowdown valve, it is also important to set a minimum relay cycle that is longer than the amount of time that it takes for the ball valve to move from its fully open position to its fully closed position and vice versa. If the relay is able to change its state before the valve has finished actuating, the valve can get stuck in a partially open or closed position and not function properly. The majority of boilers treated are smaller and cannot handle a continuous blowdown for continuous conductivity measurement. Intermittent sampling of the boiler is then the preferred method. In this case, the sensor is plumbed in the actual blowdown line and the sensor. The simplest form of intermittent sampling will open the blowdown valve for a set amount of time and leave the blowdown valve open as long as the boiler conductivity is over set point minus the dead band. For this setup, we need to program a sample time, the amount of time the valve is open to take a sample. It's important that this amount of time be long enough for the water and the drum of the boiler to reach the sensor and for the sensor temperature element to accurately read the temperature, generally around one to two minutes for this blowdown method. The controller will measure the boiler conductivity and compare it to set point. If the sample is under the set point, the blowdown valve will close at the end of the sample time. If the sample conductivity is over the set point, the relay will stay on and the valve will stay open until the conductivity has decreased below the set point by the amount of the dead band. Once the boiler conductivity is sufficiently below set point, the system will go into a wait mode for the amount of time programmed. This is the time until the next sample is taken. To change any setting shown, we simply touch it and use the numbers and arrows to adjust the values to the desired amount. And then we hit confirm. The best control of a boiler is usually done with an intermittent sample that is trapped for a short period of time to allow any flashing to condense. The trap time is called the hold time. In addition to trapping the sample, an improved method of control calculates the blowdown time based on how much over the set point the boiler conductivity is at at the end of the hold time. This is done using the proportional band and the max blowdown time settings. 
with the settings shown here, if the conductivity is 200 microsiemens or more over the set point, the boiler will blow down for 20 minutes before trapping and reading the sample again. If then it is only 100 microsiemens over the set point, the controller will blow down for only 10 minutes before trapping and reading again. The controller calculates the percentage of the proportional band and uses that percentage of the maximum blowdown time to determine how long the blowdown valve should be open. Trapping and blowdown will continue until the trap sample reads below the set point. At that point, the controller will wait for the pre-programmed amount of time, sometimes called the interval between wait, interval time, or wait time, before once again sampling the boiler. It is important to note that the conductivity measurement is not updated during the wait period since the sensor is no longer seeing a fresh sample of boiler water. Chemical feed algorithms for boilers are similar to those used for cooling towers. The most common feed algorithm used for boiler chemical feed is a flow-based timer feed. A water meter measures the water as it is added to the deaerator or feed tank and turns a chemical pump on for the, spe for the specified amount of time per accumulated volume. In some cases, chemical feed pumps are powered whenever the de-aerator feed pump is activated. A flow switch may be used in the line to detect the pump flow and the chemical feed pump turns on as soon as flow is detected. The flow switch is a digital input to the controller. 